Okay, so this isn't really the kind of video I wanted to make today. Uh, I think YouTube drama is a pretty abhorrent thing to begin with, and I certainly don't really feel comfortable instigating any. But I'm also not really that comfortable with fake videos. For what it's worth, the video you're watching right now is not monetized, if that's worth anything. I don't want to be seen to be making money off of things like this, nor do I want to be seen as purely starting this just for the purpose of making money. So for what it's worth, there are no ads on this video. Most of you are probably familiar with Hazardish. He's a fairly popular KSP YouTuber who uploaded this video a few days ago, the Tiltwing SSTO mission. And I'm actually kind of put off talking about this topic because I actually consider myself friends with Hazardish. Um, we've never met, obviously, but, you know, we've always been friendly with each other. But this video is fake. The craft you see, it just doesn't work. And it certainly can't do the things that you see it doing in this video. The first thing that immediately causes suspicion is the total lack of a craft file and any request for one is met with no response. But, you know, whatever. Some people are protective about their crafts or attached to them and, you know, they don't really want to share them. That's fine. But look at this. In the video, the wings flip up and the eight rapiers fire and the craft just effortlessly rises up. A craft of this size and this mass cannot vertically take off on eight rapiers. We can recreate this by making a rocket with the same fuel levels as the SSTO, with the rocket of course being far more vertically aerodynamic uh, than the VTOL and the fewer part count makes it lighter. And we can see this doesn't even get an inch off the ground. But for the argument's sake, and to kind of make this a little bit more bulletproof, I went a bit further. Since no craft file was made available, I actually went back to the uh, speed build video and went through frame by frame, recreating the VTOL as best I could. I think I had a pretty accurate one-to-one -one recreation by the end of it. It took a couple of hours, but I wanted to just see for myself. And this is it. And if we can, and we can see that if we just fire up the engines, nothing happens. We don't get off the ground at all. So I think we can go ahead and debunk the opening of this video right away. But if you'd still like further evidence, I have made the craft file available to download in the video description. It just doesn't work unless you hack gravity. So let's fly this thing into orbit. In fact, we can go ahead and eliminate the possibility that Hazardish can fly things more efficiently than I can. We'll just use cheats to get ourselves into low carbon orbit. This way we don't burn any liquid fuel, and so in theory we'd have exponentially more delta V than he did in his video. We're just doing this for argument's sake. Now in my experience you need a bare minimum of about 4,000 meters per second of delta V to get to lathe. This is what my 124 seat lathe SSTO video used, and in that video I used far more gravity assists and fuel saving maneuvers uh, than Hazardish did in this tilt wing video. So here we are in orbit, I added all these fuel lines to make it perfectly clear that the Kerbal Engineer readouts were accurate and they weren't missing out some of the fuel tanks or might not have been factoring in some of the fuel reserves. Here we have comparatively barely any Delta V. No matter how far I try and swing this in Hazardish's favour by, you know, completely draining all the oxidizer using HyperEdit and completely filling up all the liquid fuel tanks to full, in orbit by the way, which wouldn't have been possible if we'd flown it there. Using Hazardish's fuel levels in his video, we don't even have enough to do a Minmus landing. We could just about do a Minmus flyby. Now obviously we're working off a replica here. We can actually go deeper. I actually phoned my good friend Brad Wistance, uh, some of you may be familiar with his channel, uh, because he's much better at calculating things than I am. So uh, he went through the video and he actually calculated how much delta V was spent, how much mass and... The I'll show. I'll I'll play you the recording of our Skype conversation. And see what you think of it. So I ran the math and I figured out what the mass of his craft had to be in LKO, such that that's how much delta V he would get out of that fuel. And that's being generous and assuming that he didn't make any corrections that he didn't show. And it came out to his craft would have had to have weighed forty six thousand one hundred and seventy kilograms in LKO. So I added up just the mass of the engines in his craft plus the empty fuel tanks plus the fuel that he shows. So just the fuel tanks and the engines weigh 55,797.5 kilograms, which is more than the mass of the whole craft would have to be. So even if all the landing gear and solar panels and aero brakes and all those other little parts were zero, this would still mathematically be impossible by a very large range. I mean, this is totally irrefutable. This is fake as fuck. 
I think what he did, I think he edited parts to be lighter. I mean, the value of something in the game has been changed. That would show a natural... The fuel usage would be consistent throughout the video with other... Right, because the fuel seems to go down consistently and evenly. Right, it's internally consistent. But it's just, I think it's it's off at an even ratio over the whole thing. Yeah, but this is... And you know, what, what I was thinking at first, it might vaguely be possible, but then I saw how inefficient. First, the build is incredibly inefficient, and his flight is so inefficient. That's so unnecessary. I don't know what he was thinking. Does he think people not know how to get to Lathe or something? I mean, you know, it's irritating because uh, he has a lot bigger following than mine. And I remember, remember when I did that mission where I went to Lathe and a bunch of other planets? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know how hard I worked to get the Delta V necessary for that? I mean, I have people all the time who say stupid stuff like, oh, look at the fuel. The fuel levels changed. It's like, no, I pumped part fuel into another part. But, you know, the thing is, is... It's not even about leaving your fuel levels open or not, because if a video makes sense, it makes sense. And this this just doesn't make sense. It's not it's not close. Man. For those interested, Brad kindly did a much more detailed breakdown of all the maneuvers done in the video. I'm gonna put that at the end of this video because otherwise some of you might not want to get too bogged down in the actual math side of it. So that's at the end of the video. There's a nice breakdown of all the burns that were done. But we'll just move on for now. If we skip forward to the part of the video where we get to Jewel, we see the next case of, you know, deceit. This error capture does not work. Neither does the final one at Kerbin. The speeds here are insane. You'll notice these sort of fins at the edges, edges of the wings of the craft. These are actually designed to be destroyed by hypersonic speeds in the game. So the fact that these are still here when he's re-entering Kerbin at 5 kilometers per second, that's not possible. Now... In Hazardish's defense, I did call him out on this, and he very quickly admitted it, and then he updated the description of his video. But the fact that he didn't do this prior to me saying to him, I think you have turned off re-entry heating. You may be wondering why this bothers me, and it does bother me. There's a GIF from this video that's sitting at over 6,000 upvotes on the subreddit, which is practically viral by the subreddit standards. The video is amassing tens of thousands of views, with the original time-lapse build sitting well over 100,000. I mean, perhaps one of my biggest problems is the fact that, obviously, it's no secret that I compete directly with Hazardish. I mean, I like to think that competition between YouTubers is friendly competition, and in fact, it's a, it's a good thing to have competition because it encourages not only to keep make sure that my videos are up to a good standard, but also it kind of encourages innovation across the board. There is this continuous race to have the best vehicle, the most efficient vehicle in the game and, you know, have the best videos. And it just isn't right to have not just any YouTuber, but a YouTuber as popular as Hazardish to just be cheating and have no one call him out on it. So that's kind of the motivation for making this video, really. I will spend hours and hours and days and stressing, stressing and obsessing over getting an SSTO to work right and, you know, making sure the mission could fun. I can't even begin to imagine how many iterations of my original late SSTO video I had to go through before I managed to get one that worked. I spent months and months killing myself making that video. And it just kind of makes me think, you know, why do I even bother? when I could just cheat and be showered with praise regardless. This is not the first Hazardous video that I think is fake, but this is the first time where the fakeness has been kind of just a slap in the face. For me, every single one of his videos is now called into question. I think the other video that immediately springs to mind as being, this is fake, this is likely to be fake beyond reasonable doubt, is the single tank to Tylo video. I mean, you look at it, you can just break down the calculations in the same way we break down the late SSTO video. In the Tylo video, just very quickly breaking down the maths, uh, he had 3,816 <coughs> units of liquid fuel in LKO, and when we add together the amount of delta V his burns use, the total amount to get to lo low Tylo orbit is 2,451.2 meters per second. This is assuming that the only burns he did are the ones in the video itself, and that everything other than the mass of the fuel tanks and engine and the fuel are zero. So we're already extremely gen gen generous here. 
Now in low tidal orbit, he has 2,156 units of liquid fuel remaining, having used 1,660 to get there. This means that for this video to be possible, the craft would have had to have weighed no more than 30,930 kilos. Now if we add together just the mass of the empty tank, the liquid fuel and the engines, not even factoring in the stuff like the batteries, the pilot command seat, landing gear, reaction wheels, etc. We come to 37,080 uh, kilos, which is seven tons heavier than what should be possible. I therefore believe that this video was also faked. Um, and since the disparity in what the mass should be and what it actually is, is similar to the ratio in the lathe VTOL, which kind of makes me think that did he just do, did he use the same trick to achieve both videos? I don't know. The ultimate thing is that neither of these crafts have stock performance, that's for sure. I actually recreated, I did a soft recreation of the Tylo ship. I just had the fuel tank and the engine and the lightest probe core in the game, and that's it. In low Tylo orbit, in a similar, in basically the same orbit that has it issued, there was a few small disparity but it's basically the same for all intents and purposes and I think just because my craft is far 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 lighter than Hazardish is this is already far in his favor I have less oxidizer than him I have no ablator and I have slightly more liquid fuel as well so if this replica can't get back then there's no way that Hazardish could get back and we only have 923 meters per second of delta v now it is possible to get a Kerbin encounter with that amount of fuel, because if you can get a lathe encounter, which you can with that much delta V, you can just bounce your way back between the moons, or even just getting like another Tylo encounter and ricocheting yourself that way. But Hazlish doesn't do any gravity assist, he just burns at Tylo periapsis and he gets his Kerbin encounter. And the burn itself costs over a thousand meters per second of delta V, and I can guarantee that his craft did not have that because mine doesn't have that and mine should have more. I think we're getting too bogged down on the Tylo thing. The biggest reason I think this gets to me is that his videos are promoted a lot, and they make up a fairly decent chunk of mine and others' suggested videos tab. Now, where there are channels such as Stratton Blitz, I've probably said that wrong, Bradley Whiston, so how about McBolson, who made an amazing 100-seat late SSTO video that, you know, barely even has a 1,000 views, and his channel itself is currently sitting at 15 subscribers. How are these guys supposed to grow their channels when their main competition, or one of their main competitors, uses cheats? And it's just what kind of standard does that set? People come to our videos to get better at the game and learn how to play it. That's why I always try and make sure my resource tab is open at the top right of the screen. It's why I have the Kerbal Engineer readouts visible at all points throughout the video. And it's why I provide craft files in the description. The one thing that makes me feel a little bit bad for ripping on this guy, and don't get me wrong, I don't feel that bad because I'm not a big fan of cheating, but... It's a real shame because... I mean, he clearly put a lot of work into this, and the, the swing wing itself is, is, is impressively done. Exactly, just the, the tilt wing and the stock hinges, but, uh, they're amazing. I don't know, it's just... I feel a little bit bad for the guy at the same time. But it's more important to make sure that people are doing things legitimately. I like to think that I maintain a good level of integrity and I do take pride in the videos and missions I do and it would be nice I would like to see that integrity you know across the board because this is not the community that I want to be I don't think any of us really want to be part of please don't cheat in videos okay so this this document is just looking at the segment of the mission from low curb in orbit to capturing in lathe so first i took the fuel levels he showed in his video in lko and that's shown there at the top then i looked at the delta v of the burns he showed in his video and in this segment it includes the ejection from kerbin the burn at the nearby eve and then the correction burn near jewel so that totaled a little over 2,000 meters per second it's possible that he did some additional burns that he didn't show, but uh, just to be generous, I'm just going to use the three that he showed. So then I took the fuel, that he sh fuel levels that he shows while capturing in lathe. So that, that's the fuel before and after he did those three burns there that totaled the 2,000 meters per second. So using the equation for delta V, I can take the, the fuel used along with the delta V he got out of that fuel used and calculate the maximum possible mass that he had in LKO. 
So that maximum mass is the mass he would have had in LKO if he did just those burns that were showed using the fuel that he used. So that came out to a little over 46 metric tons, which seems strangely low. So I added up the mass of the Kraft's engines, the Kraft's empty fuel tanks, and the fuel that he had in LKO. And just those three different things added up to more than the maximum possible mass he could have had in LKO to do the maneuvers that he showed with the amount of fuel that he used. And it's, it's not particularly close. So uh, it just this mission... What he showed is not mathematically possible. And that's it. The only other potential explanation, this is being very, being very thorough, is that there's some kind of physics glitch in the game that made the game calculate his crap's mass incorrectly. And I've, I've never heard of anything like that. 